GameCube controllers are getting harder and harder to find. At Nostalgic, when we get one of these in, it's usually with a system, and if a system comes in with multiple, they're usually a GameStop or Mad Cat's brand. Finding a first-party GameCube controller in good condition can cost you quite a bit of money. And if you just want to play some Smash Bros with your friends or a few rounds of Mario Party, they're going to be hard pressed to find all the controllers you need. And that's why at Nostalgic, we try to carry as many affordable third party options that we can. A company by the name of XYAB, Wink, reached out to us and asked if we wanted to carry their controllers in our store. XYAB is a distributor that makes these third party products, cables, and controllers to make your favorite hobby a little bit easier and a little more gentle on the wallet. Now, XYAB did send us a handful of these controllers for free to test and review and see if we wanted to carry them in our store. Thank you, XYAB. That was very nice of you. However, the thoughts on this video are my own. I haven't been paid or scripted to say anything. All in the name of finding an affordable and reliable option for you when trying to get some more controllers for your retro consoles. So first things first, the packaging on these things is really simple. It's just your standard clamshell packaging that actually molds around the controller really nicely and displays that really cool translucent green in there. They sent us a handful of colors, including smoke gray, atomic purple, and blue, red, what are those? And this one, as you can see, is jungle green, which corresponds to the N64 Fantastic colors, which I thought was a nice touch. And if you watch our channel before, you know, translucent green just has my heart. You have XYAB's logo here with their little Tetris block, and then some just standard white and black design deco. The ultimate controller for the Wii and GameCube. On the back, you have a really cool LiDAR version of the controller that has a diagram of all of the different buttons and their standard functions. That's a pretty cool feature that a lot of third-party controllers really don't do. Then you have a really cool barcode there with the controller over it. Anyways, let's crack this open and see how it actually feels. So here is the smoke gray controller out of the packaging, and right off the bat, this is pretty much the exact same form factor as your standard GameCube controller. A lot of third-party companies like to redesign the controllers, make them better, and you get weird grips and things that don't even look at all like the original controller. It's pretty much a dead ringer for the original. So a quick side-by-side -side comparison here, and you can see that they're exactly the same size. That's my biggest pet peeve with controllers is when they are a little too small. And sometimes third-party controllers like to go that route to save a little money on materials. And the GameCube controller is one of the controllers that fits the best in my hands. So it's really noticeable when they're not quite the right size. And this thing fits just as perfect as it always has. The biggest difference between the visuals of these two controllers is the missing printed Nintendo GameCube because this is not an official Nintendo product. It's just blank there. I would have liked to see XYOB's logo or maybe just that little Tetris box there that would have looked kind of cool but in the end that's just nitpicky design thing they're comparable in weight i want to say the original one is just a little bit heavier the gamecube controller was never a really heavy controller to begin with and overall if there is a slight weight difference uh, it's negligible before we get into the specifics of how all the buttons feel the biggest difference between these two controllers that i feel right off the bat is the plastic wallet the plastic on the xyab feels just a little bit cheaper you can kind of tell with that little little tap test that's the original XYAB. Now the overall texturing is very similar, just with that slight matte feel to it, but still has a slight glossy sheen. In the end, this is an aftermarket product designed to be affordable and made so that you can buy multiple of them. And that being said, the plastic quality on this thing is better than a lot of third-party controllers out there. With how many used controllers and accessories we see come through Nostalgic, I see a lot of third-party controllers just obliterated. Chipped, cracked, missing a button, the cap on the joysticks come off, you name it, we've probably seen it. Yeah, I don't think it'll hold up if you run it over with your car, but these are more than durable enough to give to some kids so that they can play Mario Party. In the end, I'd probably give a third-party controller to the kids in the first place because I don't want Cheeto dust and snot all over my original controller. And since these things only cost between $15 and $20, it's a whole lot easier to make that decision. Now to get into the specifics of how all the buttons feel, you can tell that the materials are newer and freshly manufactured instead of the older, worn-down rubber membranes in this controller that have been kicking since... What, 2001, 2002? 
you've got new springing rubber membranes in there, so it gives it a bit more of a pop than a press. And sometimes that can bother people, and sometimes it throws people off, but it's important to note that the more you play with these controllers, the more you'll break in those membranes, and the more that they will feel like your original. Now, triggers are usually one of the points with third-party controllers that consistently get the feel just a little off. And XYAB has done a valiant effort at making them feel like those weird, slidey, big, chunky GameCube triggers. And they succeed for the most part. The actual press and slide feels pretty much dead on. But when you get the original GameCube trigger all the way down, you get that nice little click. On the XYAB, you press all the way down, you get kind of a sproing. And once you press it in there, it feels like there's a little more give than there should be, which sounds a little scary. And it's one of the spots that I would keep an eye on to make sure that you aren't putting too much pressure on these triggers. It's not like you can't be just playing with it. You, you can. You just don't want to take this and squeeze it as hard as you possibly can because you might bust the triggers. The same can probably be said for a lot of original controllers, but the one that's sitting right here in front of me feels nice and tight when you press all the way down. And while we're on the triggers, we can talk about the Z button. Now, the Z button's a little weird because there's a little bump on it on the original and it's been replicated here on the XYAB model. However, it's a little bit smaller than the original one, so it kind of like stands out a little more. Just took me by surprise at first. But out of all the buttons on this, this is the one that feels the most different. The original model feels like a shoulder button. You've got a bouncy rubber membrane in there. Feels nice. On the XYAB controller, you have like a click. It feels more like an immediate input, like a fight pad or something, which some people might see as a positive. Some people might see as a negative because it feels a little different. That's really all up to personal preference. In the end, serves the same function. And the last thing I want to talk about with the buttons before we fire up a game is the C-Stick. The original controller's little baby C-Stick was almost entirely rubberized. Led to this kind of soft, bouncy ball feeling little roller doodad down here. This controller has a like a rubber cap on the top of the stick and the rest is a hard plastic just like the rest of the controller. So it doesn't control stiffer, but it feels a little stiffer on your thumb. Not a big deal, just something I wanted to point out. Now that we've taken an in-depth look at the controller itself, let's hook it up to a game and see how it plays. So to test this out, we got one of my all-time favorites. Godzilla destroy all monsters melee. Godzilla versus monsters. Fight. <laughs> Who's hacking me up here? You can see with my punches here, there's really no input lag. I'm not having any problems with any of the face buttons here. That was the XYAB Ultimate GameCube controller, and yeah, this thing plays GameCube games. No, they aren't as good as an OEM controller. And yeah, there's people out there who really only want to play with original hardware. And if you're one of those people, more power to you. Maybe these controllers just aren't for you. Like I said, this is the perfect budget option for somebody looking to pick up a handful of these so they can have a melee party, play Godzilla Destroy All Monsters, or play Mario Party together. Affordable, effective, and they aren't mad cats. Thanks for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, I hope I helped you out with making your decision. And thanks to XYAB for sending these our way. I love taking a look at new products for you guys because a lot of this new third-party stuff just really isn't on a lot of people's radar. And I want to make sure to help you guys make the most informed decisions when spending your hard-earned money. We've got tons of content on the network like this with product spotlights. We also have streams, game reviews, and a ton of other stuff. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Let me know if you played Godzilla Destroy All Monsters growing up because that was absolutely my favorite GameCube game. And if you didn't, comment why. Because you better have a really good excuse. Thanks for tuning in to the Nostalgic Network, and I'll see you next time.